LeBron, do you feel like there's anything left to accomplish? I mean, you pretty much, you know, checked off all the boxes. Is there, Is there anything something left for me to accomplish as a basketball player? As a basketball player, on the court or off the court? Yeah. Everything else is extra credit. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it, though. I love it. I love what I do. And it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today. Welcome back to Fanboy Fridays. And fanboys, if you are still fanboys of LeBron James, uh, we hope your day gets progressively worse. Uh, you don't deserve to have good days. <laughs> uh, as you see the title of the video, you heard the clip I played at the beginning. That was the duck, the deer, saying that he does not have anything left to accomplish in basketball. Everything else is just icing on top. You know, never mind the fact that uh, just recently he was complaining about not having a defensive player of the year award. Uh, never mind the fact that Unclutch Sports is on a constant crusade to uh, control the narrative. But despite all that, somehow the duck does not have anything else to accomplish in basketball. Uh, in life, Especially when it comes to human beings, uh, most things are gray. They, they have a gray area. Um, you know, personality types, you, you can't say a person is either this or that. You can't say a person is either a hard worker or they're lazy. Um, because most of the time, they're gonna fall somewhere in the middle. They may lean towards one side or the other uh, but they're going to fall somewhere in the middle. And of course, you will have the extremes that uh, lean further to one side or the other. But most things are gray. The only things in life that are not gray are provable facts. Like if you're saying two plus two is four. Uh, even if you're talking about statistics, uh, LeBron James fanboys, because this is what you guys love to this is all you guys' arguments are completely based off of statistics uh, because that is the only thing uh, you know how to comprehend uh, because you really are not that great at thinking. But statistics even, uh, statistics are only, um, statistics are only black and white. They are only factual in terms of saying that you accomplished the thing. But st again, statistics don't even tell you how you accomplish it. Uh, you may have two different people who they present you bank statements saying they have a million dollars in the bank. And, you know, on the surface, you may say, oh, well, both of these guys are millionaires. They 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 are, are equally successful. But then but what the bank statement doesn't tell you is that one guy robbed a bank to get the million dollars and the other guy grinded his whole life to get the million dollars. So statistics, again, aren't really representations of, of um, how great you are at a sport. You know, they only tell that you were able to attain these stats, but they don't tell how you were able to attain the stats. They don't say, oh, well, this guy's great for three quarters, and but he's a failure in the fourth quarter. Uh, they don't say, oh, well, this guy picks up a lot of extra stats because whether they're blowing out a team or getting blown out, he's going to stay in uh, and get his stats. Uh, LeBron James and Draymond Green, uh, they don't tell you these kind of things. And the reason I'm bringing all of this up is because when we're talking about LeBron James, uh, LeBron James, he says he has nothing left to accomplish in basketball. And from a certain perspective, I completely agree with him. If we're talking about accomplished in basketball because he needs something else to help boost his legacy, uh, I completely agree. LeBron James has nothing else to accomplish because there's nothing LeBron James could have ever done <laughs> to actually surpass Michael Jordan. If, if this was his goal, LeBron James, let me say this for you fanboys, LeBron James simply 
did not have the mentality to pass Michael Jordan. It starts there. And we've been in this, this day and age where people have been trying so hard to ignore the things that not only work in basketball, but have worked throughout human history or, or have been constant throughout human history, uh, probably since the beginning of the time. And that is people who have a killer instinct are going to succeed much more than those who don't have the killer instinct. We've been, they have been trying to rewrite this standard for LeBron James for his whole career. Uh, everything that we have previously known about sports, that we have previously accepted about sports, they have been trying to rewrite this for the duck. In other words, uh, now somehow winning is not that important. You know, uh, now somehow, oh, well, having a killer instinct isn't that important. Now, somehow, it is okay to make excuse for the player uh, because, oh, he didn't have the right coach. He didn't have the right teammates. All of these things that previously was neither here nor there is as a as a competitor, are you going to find a way to get it done? I've done a video on this before. And so going back to the black and white uh, and gray area, uh, one could say there's two types of people. There are people who will dominate their circumstances, no matter what those circumstances are. And there are people who are completely controlled by the circumstances. Now, those are the two extremes. But in reality, most people lie somewhere in between the two extremes. But there are certain people who I believe it doesn't matter what circumstances you put them in. They are going to dominate. They're just relentless. Is, is no give up in them. They, they are just that kind of person. I've done a video on this. I believe Michael Jordan... Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, uh, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Kobe took a little longer to develop because he came into the league straight out of high school and because he came into the league at a time where someone straight out of high school wasn't going to be handed the key, keys to the kingdom. So Kobe took a little longer to fully come into what we would know him to be, and that's the Mamba. But... Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, uh, Magic Johnson, these are players who I believe would they were going to win championships no matter what situation they came into. I truly believe that, uh, not because they were necessarily any more talented than anybody else, but simply because they were more relentless at developing uh, their talent and they were more relentless at imposing their will on the game, imposing their will on the circumstances. Now, you know, obviously Larry Bird and Magic Johnson played on great teams. So I can hear you fanboys now already saying, oh, well, they, they played on great teams. Oh, well, you try to say Michael Jordan uh, played on a super team. So <laughs> we know where your logic is at. But I believe certain players, due to the mentality, it doesn't matter where you put them, they were going to win championships. Now, more or less, yeah, may, maybe so. Uh, you know, maybe they would have won more than what they won. Maybe they would have won a little less than what they won. But I believe there are players there due to the mentality, due to that overcoming nature of their mentality, that they were going to win no matter where they went. They were going to find a way to get it done because there was, that was their sole life mission. That's what they lived for. They didn't just want to win. They wanted to dominate the competition. And that kind of attitude is going to give you an edge uh, over someone else. And then there are players, to me, who are very much dependent upon their circumstances. They have to have the right coach, the right teammates. And what it, again, to me, what it all comes down to is like I said, it's, it's skill, will, and leadership. To me, the greatest of the great players, they have these three things in combination uh, in higher quantities than any other players, the skill, will, and leadership. There are lots of players who have had the skill, uh, 
and I will say to, to me to to some degree the will and the leadership ties in together uh, because those players with the most will uh, they are going to impose that on their teammates as well they're going to impose that accountability on their teammates as well um, but yeah I was just looking at a documentary on Vince Carter the other day and man I forgot how incredible Vince Carter was <laughs> you know half man half amazing I forgot how completely incredible this guy was and you know and he was in Toronto <clears throat> you know of course towards the beginning of it uh, Tracy McGrady was there with him which you know if they could have stayed together that that probably would have been something really special but McGrady wanted to be in his own situation but Vince Carter to me, the reason why he never got it done, because my goodness, uh, what an athlete. Uh, you know, the, the guy could shoot, uh, he could finish at the rim, and I'm not just talking about dunking. Like, he had some amazing, <clears throat> he had some amazing layups as well. Uh, you know, some nice handles. I, I just really forgot how great of a player this guy was. And just in terms of skill on the court, but to me, the reason why Vince Carter couldn't get it done is because he wasn't the, the kind of leader who was going to push his teammates in any way necessary to make them uh, play to the best of their ability. That wasn't Vince Carter. Uh, Vince Carter was, you know, somewhat of a nice guy. You know, he, he kind of had the LeBron James, well, Except I would say Le Vince Carter was actually a nice guy. Uh, if you watched my video earlier, I really don't believe LeBron James is a nice guy. It's, just, it's too many repetitive patterns in, Le in the way that LeBron James does things to actually come to the conclusion that he's a nice guy. What you can come to the conclusion is, is LeBron James is a super selfish guy. But anyway, going back to Vince Carter, to me what held him back is... is yeah, he, he was kind of a nice guy and he didn't have that kind of personality who was going to really uh, go at his teammates until they were performing at their 100% maximum. Again, we're going back to Michael Jordan. If you think about the teammates he had, all of these guys, you know, with the exception of Rodman, who came from the Detroit Pistons, and maybe Ron Harper, who was great, you know, back in the Cleveland days, uh, all of these guys who played with the Chicago Bulls had they not played with the Bulls? You, you're not hearing about these guys. To me, you're not. We're not talking about a Steve Kerr or uh, B.J. Armstrong or Horace Grant or Winnington or Luke Longley. You know all these players who apparently make Chicago a super team, according to you fanboys. We're not talking about Scottie Pippen in the same way. If he doesn't go. If he's not getting pushed every day in practice by Michael Jordan, who, again, who is just relentless on everybody. Again, like I said, players who impose their will on the game, impose their will on the game. They not only impose it on the opposite team, but they impose their will on their teammates as well. They impose their will everywhere it needs to be in order to get the job done. And so... You know, I just did a video about Ron Artest, about him being mentored from Larry Bird. And when he was being mentored, at the height of that, and I think it was the year before Ron Artest actually wound up leaving Indiana, but Ron Artest, and it, this is amazing because I think uh, it's safe to say that when you mention the name Ron Artest, Meta World Peace, that we all think defense first. This is what I believe any NBA fan who's been following the NBA during his days, I believe that is the first thing you think about is, is you think about a great defender in Ron Artest. But the last year, because he was being mentored by Larry Bird, the last year before he left Indiana, Ron Artest was averaging 25 points a game on uh 50% shooting from the field, 41% shooting from the three-point line, and 92% shooting from the free throw line. While he was being mentored by Larry Bird. But once he left Larry Bird, his offensive numbers dropped again. 
And I believe because Run Artest, he is the kind of person that uh, he's more affected by the circumstances. He he needs to be somewhere. Uh, he If he had stayed with Indiana and was un, un, able to stay under the leadership of, of Larry Bird, who knows how we would be talking about Run Artest right now. I mean, those numbers are incredible. 50% from the field, 41% from three, 92% uh, from the free throw line. That is better than LeBron James will ever be able to do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but Ron Artest is one of those kind of players who, to me, his, his circumstances more dictates his outcome. And of course... When we're talking about the deer, the duck, uh, there is no greater example of a so-called superstar whose whole career has been dictated by him manipulating the circumstances, not by him imposing his will on the game of basketball. LeBron James' whole career has come from him manipulating the circumstances not by him imposing his will on the game of basketball. And that began the minute he left Cleveland. When he's trying to, you know, uh, put himself in a better situation, but not just a better situation, because th this is where it really all falls apart. It's not that he was leaving Cleveland trying to put himself in a better situation. He left Cleveland trying to stack the deck in a way that it should have been no way that he could lose. And this is what they all went in thinking. Him, Wade, and Bosch said this over and over again. You don't get up there and say not one, not two, not three, not four, and five, and six. If you didn't believe that you had put together the magic combination only to come back years later on his Ridiculous Cop podcast with J.J. Ridiculous, uh, who is now coaching the Lakers, <laughs> to come back years later and say basically they lost 2011 because they had minimum guys because outside of the starting five they, re they really didn't have anybody again so LeBron James has proven that his whole career has been dictated by him maneuvering the circumstances uh, around his career he has not proved that he can overcome. If he if he was going to prove that, he would have stayed right there in Cleveland and he would have stuck it out. And again, he would have just kept fighting to get better and better every year, every day until it overcame. But this is where we get to where we are now over the last few days to where uh, Kwame Brown has been banned from Twitter for trying to contact Sal Chell Sonnen, but the whole thing stemmed from LeBron James coming back at, Le at Kwame Brown for Kwame Brown simply saying that, hey, you don't have a mid-range game. You don't have a go-to move. You don't have a fadeaway. You don't have these things uh, from the great players that I was able to watch uh, that make them unstoppable, that make them capable of getting off a quality last shot in the clutch time. LeBron, you don't have these things. And it's the truth. Kwame Brown did not lie when he says LeBron James does not have it. I don't care what you fanboys want to say in my comments. LeBron James doesn't have go-to moves. Again, I've said it before. When LeBron James uh, takes these buzzer beaters, they look like Hail Marys. When you watch Michael Jordan... Uh, take the last second shot it looks like he's in practice so yeah <laughs> i agree with lebron james in the sense that uh yeah you don't have anything left to accomplish because 
you were never going to be what you wanted to be and what the media has been trying to make you. You didn't have it uh, mentally to be that kind of person, and you can't be that kind of person without having that. Men Let's go ahead and get this clear. Fanboys, this is for you. This is for you ridiculous members of the CFL and the 4 and 6 Kingdom. You cannot get the same kind of outcome as Michael Jordan without having the mentality of a Michael Jordan. If you don't have that mentality, you are not going to reach that kind of greatness. And you can make every excuse in the book that you want, you know, again, because this is what they've been doing for LeBron James. This is what they've been trying to, to uh, uh, figure out a way around the, Oh, there, there's many ways to win a championship. Yeah, there's many ways to win a championship, but there's not many ways to get to 6-0. and 0. This is what they're leaving out. It's like, oh, it's plenty of ways. Oh, LeBron James doesn't have to be the kind of leader that Michael Jordan was. He, he doesn't have to be a a-hole to his teammates and push them to their stress point and, and make practice feel like the finals. He doesn't have to do that. There's many ways to win a championship. <clears throat> yes, there is many ways to win a championship, but there is not many ways to get to 6-0 in the finals. There's not many ways to do that. <laughs> so, before we get out of here, uh, last thing I'm going to say. Now, so I said I agree with LeBron James from that standpoint because, like I said, LeBron James just did not have it in him to be that kind of player. He didn't have it in him to to really uh, get on that level to where he is regarded worldwide uh, and where he would be regarded worldwide for the next 20 years as the greatest player to ever play the game. LeBron James didn't have that in him. Um, but now as far as uh, being supposedly, supposedly you're a competitor and a basketball player, uh, supposedly you're getting paid millions of dollars a year to do this job that many people uh, who are basketball players themselves would, would love to take that place, to take that spot, uh, to show some respect to the game. In that sense, uh, LeBron James is completely ridiculous to say you have nothing left to accomplish. To me, this is just a move that LeBron James does to always make it seem as if there is nothing wrong with him as a player. LeBron James never comes out and says anything that can make it look like he needs to work on some things or he needs to do more. This is not LeBron James. So yeah, in the sense of uh, respecting the game, in the sense of respecting uh, the fundamental aspect of all sports, which is competition, LeBron James, anytime you suit up, you should be trying to accomplish something. And it shouldn't be just stats because we know this is the only thing that LeBron James is going to be trying to do this season is add more and more to the stats. And, you know, hopefully can, he can he can uh, hold on to these scoring records and titles uh, for for as long as possible. But I, I, I got some bad news for you, fanboys. Uh, LeBron James was able to get these records for uh, a couple of reasons. And, and one of the reasons we we know why allegedly, uh, you know, the the juice. That that's one of the reasons. Uh, but the other reason is that they've been making the game easier and easier. And I will say this. Um, and and the other thing is that the NBA is so desperate to have a Michael Jordan like superstar who garnered the kind of attention and the that Michael Jordan did who grew the NBA in the way that Michael Jordan did. The, the NBA has been so desperate for that that it got to the point to where they were willing to manufacture it in LeBron James. But fanboys, here's the deal. If the NBA keeps trending in the direction that it's trending, if they keep allowing the game to get easier and easier, which they have been, again, we just had an all-star game where... Uh, both teams scored over 400 points. Completely ridiculous. If the NBA keeps trending in this direction, if the NBA keeps uh, 
being so desperate to find the next Michael Jordan because this is what they will be doing for the next several years is trying to find the next Michael Jordan. And because of that, they will allow the next person who they choose to try to fill that spot to get away with murder like they did for LeBron James. Fanboys, those records LeBron James set are not going to hold as last as, last as long as Kareem's did. Now, let me go ahead and tell you that. Especially according to you guys. According to you guys, human evolution happened so fast and, and whatnot. <laughs> you know, between human evolution... <clears throat> Between human evolution, between the game getting easier and easier, between uh, modern medicine, between the NBA looking the other way for, for players who they choose to be in that spotlight or be the face of the league, meaning that they would be willing to let these players juice it up, <laughs> uh, those records are going to last as long as you guys think. But anyway, <laughs> we going to hold up here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. What do you think of the deer? Of the duck saying he has nothing left to accomplish in the game of basketball that everything else is just icing on top. You know, the, 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 the stat padding is just more icing to the four and six cake that he has baked. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day. And I'll see you next time. All right.